So, what is your uh, profession? Well, at this time, I am a farmer, and I keep leaf cutter bees for the purpose of pollinating alfalfa. I grow alfalfa for seed. This is my crop right here. But I also, as a little bit of a hobby, I have a couple of hives of honeybees. So, um, where are those honeybees? Well, those honeybees are in those boxes just off to the west of where we're standing there. All right, let's go there. All right. So, how long have you, have you been doing this? This is my first year in this business. I uh, got the idea back in the winter and happened to be in very good shape uh, with my dad farming and this particular field already being an alfalfa. So I decided, well, instead of, instead of cutting and baling it for animal feed, why don't we try this with the leaf cutter bees and we'll try and harvest the seed. So it worked real well. So anyway, we're about to go inspect the uh, honeybee hives here. So let's, uh, let's suit up and, uh, and we'll hood up here. All right, let's get down to business. All right. So what are you doing now? Smoking the bees. Calms them down. Wow, the population has just boomed and been away. We've been away. Oh, really? Oh, they're just... How many bees are in there? Thousands, man. Probably upwards of 30,000 per colony. There's two colonies here. Wow. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> looks impressive. They're all, they're all females, all the workers. Huh. Okay. We just came with that squad, by the way. <laughs> so we put a little smoke on the top of the top of the box that kind of gets them calmed down. And then let's have a look at what they've been up to while we've been away. All right, open it up. So we'll split split one frame out, get it free. Oh, they've got her built together pretty good. Oh, and that means much honey, right? Uh, well, it means they've been building comb anyway. Let's see what we got. For oh, it's heavy. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, no, no. Look at that. Wow. All those cells are right full of nectar. Wow. They haven't capped it off yet. It's not ready to be capped. But um, look at that. You see the nectar in those cells? Mm-hmm. So they've been building out the comb and filling it with nectar. So it's very, they're, they're very busy, they're working hard. Great. I'm hoping below they've got some capped honey. I'm really hoping they've got capped honey in the boxes below. All right. So I'm gonna, we're gonna go down to the next box. Awesome. We're in the bottom, we're in the second box now. We've took the top box off. This was a frame that I did for comb honey. You see that, the marking? Yeah, yeah, see the marking there. Okay. Okay, so they have built the comb down. Is it like all the way? They, yeah, it's because the, the, the foundation only comes to that black mark there. All uh, right, yeah. So then they built it all the way down. Mm. The only thing is they don't have it, they don't have it all capped off yet. Hmm. I was really hoping they would have it capped off. So I'm going to have to leave it in there. Hmm. But it's possible that the other comb honey one might be might be closer to done. Yeah, we have to take a look at that. I'm gonna look at this other. Um, I'm gonna look at another one that was um, what they call drawn comb. Just What's that? There. Well, that's a frame that had come out of another another beekeeper's beehive. So it was already comb when the season started. Yeah. So they didn't have to do any work on the comb. Hmm, interesting. Oh, look at all of that honey just dripping down. Amazing. Wow. Wow.
Okay, we are now on a quest to find the queen. We're going to find the queen bee. Her royal eminence! Okay, this here is the queen excluder. The queen is too big to come up through this grate. So it keeps her down in the brood box where she lays eggs, the future generation of bees. The excluder is coming off. Queen excluder. Oh, queen excluder. Okay. So is the queen somewhere there? She will be here somewhere. Wandering around. Yes. Now, I just see we... Oh, 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 oh. You see something there? I see some signs of things that are very interesting. Okay, here's the deal. We got some queen cells right there. Big one. Right there, right there. Possibly that's a supersedure cell right there. Those big cells. So that's a problem. Um, that would indicate to me they might be planning on swarming. The queen is nowhere to be found yet. So what's your observation? Well, I'm looking at one bee that's got her butt end inside a cell here, so it could be the queen laying an egg. I'm not sure. I'll just wait for it to move. All right. Stand by. Okay, so now we're um, we're closing up the hive here. I'm just grabbing some frames of brood. Lots of brood here. That's the young young bees capped off, and that means they're going to be hatching out anywhere from tomorrow to a couple of weeks from now. Lots of capped broods. This is a very, very strong hive. And I'm going to get it back in there. How about the uh, queen? We were searching for the queen. I was hoping to find the queen to show, to show y'all, but I'm not the most experienced beekeeper, and so She's tough to spot, and I did not manage to find her. And uh, we're not going to put enough time, you know. We're we're we don't we're not going to worry about her today. So I see young I see young brood. So I'm very confident that we have a healthy laying queen in here somewhere. But I didn't manage to spot her. So now we're putting the beehive back together. How long does the queen live? She lives about five to seven years. And after she goes on her first mating flight, she can lay eggs for the rest of her life. Wow. So how much is that compared to normal average worker bees? The worker bees live about a month. They just work themselves so hard and they they just get worked to death. There we have a lost bee looking for its hive. This is another empty frame which will be added into the beehive. And here I got you some comb. Oh, look at that, look at that. Delicious comb. Yeah, they honeycomb. There was enough space for them to just build it, so. There we go. Okay, so just get an extra frame put in there so they got some more room, more room to work and more things to build. And more honey to make. Well, honey is money. Alrighty, close her up. Nicely closed. How did this go, the beehive? Went very well. We inspected two two hives there. 
Uh, very strong hives, making lots of honey. Really happy about it. All right. All righty. That's all for now. All right, take care. Okay, we're in the house here now. Got lots of capped honey. And then also some nectar here that's um, still <laughs> so heavy. Wow, this frame is heavy. It's right full. Nectar here that's not quite ripened into honey yet. But if it's mixed with the capped honey, it'll all it'll all be acceptable and acceptable quality. And just beautiful. Mm, beautiful. Right. Okay. Yeah. So obviously, when I get into when I get into industrial production, I'll use a spinner. A, uh, an, ex an actual extractor, but for the purpose of us enjoying a sweet treat today, we're just going to scrape the wax and the honey and everything into this pot, and then boil away the uh, boil away the, uh, the wax. So, how much are you going to sell this for? These products. Well, probably looking at about seven dollars Canadian per kilogram is kind of the target price I'm looking for. Right, right. So, so what does make this honey special? So this honey is harvested from the nectar of alfalfa flowers from my field that is being left for seed. So those alfalfa flowers are there all throughout the season that the bees are working. They won't have to look for other food sources. They'll have that consistent food source so you can know that you're very close to pure uh, alfalfa honey here. So that nectar is higher bricks. Uh, and, and as I mentioned, it's being done organically and that field of alfalfa is being left for seed. So those flowers are there all through the season that the, that the honeybees are, are working. So they are predominantly getting it from those flowers and they're not having to look around for other sources. So it should be very, very close to pure alfalfa honey. So here's our product that we harvested today. Beautiful, raw, unfiltered, unpasteurized, beautiful, pure honey. Oh, look at that, look at that. One, One kilogram pale here. All right, so can I take a sample of this uh, delicious honey? Absolutely. All right. Mmm. Mmm. This taste is so special. I've never tasted such, such great honey before. Wow. It's amazing. <laughs>